Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist and refractive surgeon here at Cohen Laser and Vision Center in Boca Raton, Florida. Today, I want to give a brief overview of how the eye works. I think it's important for patients in general to understand how the eye functions and to learn its basic anatomy so that you can understand when things go wrong, how we can fix them. So in its most simplified sense, the eye is a camera. It has elements that focus and bend light onto a sensor or something that can detect the light signal. And then that information is processed in the brain where we get a sense of our visual surrounding in the world around us. And all three of those elements need to function perfectly in order for us to see. Now, if we look at the actual anatomy of the eye, we see that the two focusing elements are the cornea and the lens. Now, this is the emphasis of focus in our practice as well. As refractive surgeons, our job is to make sure that the curvature and shape and transparency of these two structures is optimal to allow you to see as clearly as possible. Now, the cornea is right in front. This structure uh, does most of the curving and bending of the light or most of the refracting. And the Curvature is important relative to the length of the eye because the light needs to be focused all the way back here in the retina. If the cornea is curved too much, then that means that light focuses in front of the retina and that means that you are nearsighted. If the cornea is too flat relative to the length of the eye, this is called the axial length, the distance from the front to the back of the eye, then you are farsighted, meaning you see better far away than you do up close. And if the curvature is a little mixed, meaning on one part of the cornea it might be a little steep and another part it might be a little bit flat, that's called an astigmatism, and that causes distortion of the eye. And we can treat all of these refractive problems with glasses, contacts, or refractive surgery in some situations. And the appropriate measurements and analysis of this structure is critical in refractive surgery. Now, right behind that is the iris. The iris is the brown or blue part of the eye. That's right here. And this right in the middle is the pupil. That's the black part of the eye when we look at the eye from the front. Now, as the eye opens and closes, or the iris opens and closes through little muscles in the structure, that lets more or less light in depending on our environmental surroundings. Now, right behind that is the natural lens. The lens should be clear, just like it is here. But over time, the lens loses its flexibility, and that is called presbyopia. That means that we lose our ability to zoom in when we're looking at objects close to us. So presbyopia is a natural part of the aging of the eye, and eventually the lens becomes so inflexible that it begins to crystallize and becomes opaque, and that's called a cataract. In order to fix that problem, we have to surgically remove the lens entirely and replace it with an artificial lens that's designed for your eye. So again, measurements are critical to make sure that you have successful cataract surgery. Now this big cavity here is the vitreous cavity. It's filled with vitreous humor, which is a clear sack of proteins basically. And over time, these proteins can liquefy and they can separate from the back of the eye or the retina. There's a thin membrane called the hyaloid that encapsulates all the vitreous. And sometimes that hyaloid can peel off the back of the eye and flake off into little pieces. And that's called vitreous detachment. And that can contribute to floaters or even flashes of light. That's actually fairly common. However, if the vitreous pulls too hard and takes retinal tissue with it, and that is a problem. That can create retinal holes or tears, and that is a medical or ophthalmic emergency oftentimes. And that needs treatment from a specialist to make sure that that can be fixed. Now, the retina, as I alluded to, is the thin structure in the very back of the eye. It is also transparent, but it contains very specialized cells and nerve cells that sense the light input and process it accordingly. This is the film in our camera, or the sensor in our digital camera. And the rods and cones in the back of the retina are really critical in understanding our visual world. And the very center of the retina, where all the light is supposed to focus, is called the fovea, or the macula. And damage to the macula or fovea can cause the image to be smeared or blurred through no fault of the cornea or the lens. Some conditions that can contribute to that are macular degeneration or even problems with diabetes that can affect the retina as well. Now this structure here is the optic nerve. It is a collection of nerve axons, which basically the nerve bodies live within the retinal tissue. And that signal, like the USB cable and the digital camera, sends all the visual information to the brain, the very back of the brain, called the occipital lobe where the visual cortex lives. And that's where all our visual processing is basically materialized in our brain and our consciousness so that we can understand our spatial awareness. Now the input from both eyes needs to be aligned and therefore muscles around the eye that control our orientation and movement also needs to make sure that they are functioning appropriately as well. If the eyes are misaligned, that can contribute to double vision and double vision can be very problematic for patients causing dizziness or disorientation or problems with depth perception. If this occurs in childhood, that's called strabismus, that could lead to an abnormal development of one of the eyes because the brain is focusing one image over the other. That's called a lazy eye or amblyopia, and that does require treatment very young. After the age of 9 or 10, the visual development is pretty much fixed, and if you happen to have misalignment or problem with development of one eye, it often can't be fixed with any surgery, glasses, or contacts, unfortunately. 
So I hope this helped clear things up when understanding how the eye works from the front to the back, from the cornea, through the iris, to the lens, the vitreous, the retina, and the optic nerve, all the way back to the visual cortex in the brain and how all these elements need to be functioning for you to see the world around you properly. Now we'll go into other videos about more details about these structures and more details about disease processes that can occur that can disrupt your normal functional vision. But this is just a broad overview and I think it's important for you to review the natural anatomy so that when you come in for your exam, if there's terms that you might need clarification on, you'll have a basic understanding of what we're referring to. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. You can visit our website, www.cohenlaser.com, for more information, or call us at the number below to set up an appointment. Thanks for your time, and I will see you in the next one.